Hey, Philip here. Are you curious to know what automotive or mechanical engineers do? Well, by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of what we do. Now, with that being said, let's get into it. Now, I've worked in the field of automotive engineering, primarily the trucking industry. I've been a design engineer for a year and a half, and I'm now in the process engineering role. So I have a good understanding of what both sides of engineering encompasses as far as the design side and the production side of things. I'll just share my experience of what I do as an automotive engineer and Note that automotive engineer is very broad. There can be test engineers, production engineers, manufacturing engineers, design engineers. Starting on the R&D side of things, the research and development side, all new projects, all new products start off with sales. So the customer will come to the sales team and the sales team and the customer will talk about details as far as what the customer wants. You know, if they want a truck with uh, specs A, B, and C that can withstand load X, Y, and Z, you know, whatever the case may be. From there, the sales team will communicate that with the lead engineer and the lead engineer will then talk with the sales team to see if it's feasible, see what we can and can't do. And if we can't do something, we'll come up with an alternative solution so that we can still get the project. Now, once the project is greenlit, the lead engineer will distribute the workload evenly to the team. And from here, uh, I've worked on several subsystems, whereas at a large corporation, I may be with a team of engineers working on one subsystem for a year or so. You know, I've had the privilege of working on multiple subsystems in the short time that I've graduated at university. Once I'm in the design phase, each design has checkpoints along the way, making sure that we're, we're moving forward in the right direction. And along the way, we're making sure our bracketry, our designs, everything is up to FMVSS, which is Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards, or meet or exceed OE quality. Now we prototype in-house, so we make bracketry, we 3D print plastics, we uh, mock up fiberglass pieces, make sure everything fits well, making sure that material is analyzed and that it will not fail its certain application. And then from there, we will finalize the design, we'll send it out to our supplier. Now throughout this project, documentation is occurring. So you remember all the writing you did in, in university, well, now you have to continue writing. <laughs> so along the way, you're revising parts, making sure you're documenting the parts, uh, updating work instructions, updating bill of materials, making hardware kits if you need to. Writing never stops. You never escape writing and documentation. Now towards the end of the project, the customers will come back and check out the product. Um, there will be some things that they like and don't like, and we'll obviously change the things that they don't like. So we'll make final revisions, final modifications, document those uh, final modifications. That way, when we hand off the product or the project to uh, the production side of things, it's, an, it's a smooth and easy transition. Now onto the production side of things. This is completely different than the R&D side because on the research and development side, you sort of know what you're doing the next day. For example, on the R&D side, maybe some projects last a year, maybe some projects last a few months. On the production side of things, um, you sort of don't know what you're doing the next day. You have an idea, but anything can happen. For example, today I was working with a technician revising work instructions on one of our projects, and then midday I got called over to do some templates. You know, it just depends. Uh, I could be making bracketry that we ran out of stock of, or I could be making new brackets, you know, simple designs, simple one off things. Again, documenting along the way, making sure we keep track of why we made this bracket, for what project, for which project it was for, and that way if we come across that project again later down the road, we're not remaking the same bracket, we have something to reference off of. And that's my main goal as a process engineer, is to make the whole process easier for everybody. You know, whatever I can do to make the technician's jobs easier, ultimately makes my job easier, ultimately makes everyone's jobs easier. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you like more of this kind of content, like so the YouTube algorithm knows, subscribe for more information like this regarding college, engineering, and finance. And we'll get to the finance stuff later down the road. Uh, but here's a little clip of what to expect for the next video, so stay tuned for that. Um, I think you'll enjoy it. <laughs> so with all that being said, I thank you for watching. Until next time, we'll see you. Now once I'm in the design phase, yes, you, yeah. you hey buddy, yes, hey, go lay down.